Hawking's video, we are going to investigate this piecewise function, and in particular, we will pay attention to what happens to do this when x is at 1. And let's just come with a graph first, so that it's easier for us to talk about. When x is not equal to 1, we have this expression. And how can we make a graph of that? Well, this looks scary, but we do notice we can factor things out and cancel things out, right? So let's do that. On the top, I can factor out an x, and then we will get x minus 1. And then on the bottom, we can factor this out. This is the difference of two squares. So I get x minus 1 times x plus 1. And then, of course, we can cancel out the x minus 1. Because we are saying x is not equal to 0, and you really have to pay attention to this condition. We will actually end up with an open circle when x is 0. But let's see. Let's go ahead and make our sketch of the graph right here. When x is at 1, it's pretty much we have the graph x over x plus 1, right? And now the question is, how can we graph x plus x plus 1? x over x plus 1, like this. Well, one of the ways to do it is you can do long division, if you would like. And you can also just put plus 1, minus 1, if you would like. Or if you can use a graphing calculator, that's up to you as well. But the easiest way is that you can see if I add 1 and then minus 1, this is just a quick way to see this is x plus 1 over x plus 1 and then minus this one over x plus 1. In another word, this is just 1 minus that. Right? This right here should be x plus 1. So, you should recognize how to graph 1 over x plus 1. We do have a vertical asymptote at negative 1. But this right here is actually on the other side. So let me just make a sketch right here for you guys. So here is x equals to negative 1. And we will have a vertical asymptote. Because, of course, we see that x right here cannot be negative 1. Well, when we have a negative multiplied by this, it's just the reflection, right? Instead of going this, which is the usual look of 1 over x plus 1, when we have this negative, it becomes like that instead. So this is the negative 1 over x plus 1. And then when we have this positive 1 in front, we bring this up one time. This right here, originally you have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0, vertical asymptote at x equal to negative 1. But because of this one, we have to bring this up one time. So I'm also going to do that for you guys. We have the 1 right here for the y value, and here we have a horizontal asymptote. And usually we just care about a sketch of this kind of graph. So let's go ahead and put this down right there. The left hand side is just like that. And then the right hand side is just like this. And if you want to be slightly precise, you can see if x is equal to 0, in fact, you get 0 over negative 1. So it's 0. So I should have made the graph like this. We have to cross 0, 0. So the graph should look like this. And I will try to make this um, symmetrical, so the graph actually will look like that, maybe. Anyway, that's pretty much this part. But we also have to pay attention. Right here, I should have extended this curve. However, though, this rational function it was only good for when x is not equal to 1. So when x is not equal to 1, I will have to, when x is equal to 1, I will have to uh, erase that little hole because I just want to graph this part everywhere except for x is being equal to 1. So technically, this right here is the graph. And I should have putting an open circle right here. And you might be wondering, well, we simplify this for what? We simplify this. We factored it and canceled it so that we know the graph, how it looks like when x is not equal to 1. And when x is equal to 1, in fact, you have to relate to uh, the definition. When x is equal to 1, f of x was defined to be exactly 1. So we will have this 1 
right here, right? I should put this down in black, I mean in red, so you see that the red curve, right? The red curve along with this red dot, all together we have the function f of x, right? And if you have just this part, and that's you are talking about this right here, and of course you show erase that little hole right here. Okay, so another interesting question is that, well, we do have a removable discontinuity, right? And uh, what's the y value right here? What's the y value of this open circle? The red circle right here was at 1. So let me just put down 1 right here. But how about, let me just do like this. How about the open circle? What's the y value for that? Well, in order for us to figure this out, all we have to do is actually to take the limit as x approaching 1 of the function. So we will just look at it like this. And look at when x is approaching 1. We are not talking about exactly 1. So you ignore this part. But rather, you have to refer back to this. So this right here tells you the limit as x approaching 1 refer to this uh, expression. We get x squared minus x over x plus 1. x squared plus x squared minus 1. I'm looking at the original. And then you can factor things out and cancel things out, which is what we did. And this is the limit as x approaching 1 x over x plus 1. And then in the end, you can just plug in 1 to all the x, 1 over 1 plus 1, which you get 1 half. And once again, this right here is for the situation when x is not exactly 1. So if you would like, you can also include this on your graph. This right here should be 1 half. Right? This right here should be 1 half. And of course, if you really would like to make this pretty, you just make it pretty. So this is the curve like that. And here we have this right here. It's supposed to be 1 half. Yeah. So the y for you right here is 1 half. Right? So anyway, this is pretty much it. But as you can see, this right here is in fact a bad definition because even though you define x is equal to 1 to have the y value equal to 1. You have this red point. This red point, unfortunately, didn't fill in this open circle. So the function is discontinuous at x equal 1. Right? X, the function is discontinuous at x equal to 1 because we have a removable discontinuity. And we also have this function being discontinuous at negative 1 because we have a vertical asymptote. So perhaps I will just make a note on the side right here. <laughs> right here. Okay. This continuous at x equal to 1 because as you can see that it's a removable removable discontinuity, right? And then at x equals to negative 1, we have a vertical asymptote. So Ba, right? So this right here, you can include that, right? And that's it.